shot into the plate, and the plate. Pop quiz, how do you go from Captain Clutch to the Iron Horse through a milestone and a marathon? The answer is next on Hall of Fame Connections. On May 2nd, 1939, Lou Gehrig took a day off, ending his remarkable streak of 2,130 consecutive games played that began some 14 years earlier. Gehrig never played another big league game, and yet he remained captain of the Yankees for the rest of the 1939 season. 80 years after Gehrig made his debut, another legend was named captain of the Yankees, a man by the name of Derek Jeter. Number two. Derek Jeter, number two. The captain, Derek Sadison Jeter, is one of the winningest players in Major League history. When he retired from a career loaded with one iconic moment after another, he found himself sixth on the all-time hit list. He was wearing these very batting gloves when he notched one of those most memorable hits, the 3,000th of his career, on July 9, 2011. And in true Jeter fashion, he did it in style. See ya! 3,000! History with an exclamation point! Oh, what a way to join the 3,000 hit club! Derek Jeter has done it in grand style! Going five for five as the first man to reach the 3,000 hit mark as a Yankee. Isn't that amazing? A guy who doesn't hit home runs on his 3,000th hit hit the tar out of it. We were all hoping that the 3,000th hit would be clean. Baby, that was as clean as any hit you've ever seen in your life. He's just the second player in history whose 3,000th hit was a home run. The first was a former teammate from the Yankees' 1996 World Series championship team. On August 7th, 1999, Wade Boggs crushed an off-speed pitch into the right field stands for a career hit number 3,000. Playing for the Devil Rays near his hometown of Tampa, Boggs was the first player ever to reach the milestone with a round tripper. As one of the game's premier contact hitters, the five-time batting champion was the model of consistency over his career, hitting above 300 for 15 of his 18 seasons. But before he began his Cooperstown bound career, Boggs played in an epically prolonged game where he would cross paths with another future Hall of Famer. In 1981, the AAA Rochester Red Wings and the Pawtucket Red Sox played the longest game in professional baseball history, 33 innings over three days. That's taking extras to the extreme. If you check out this understandably complicated scorebook from the game, you might notice the names of the third baseman, Wade Boggs and Cal Ripken Jr. Cal Ripken was named the International League Rookie of the Year in 1981, and he made his Major League debut with the Baltimore Orioles weeks after the conclusion of that record-setting game. Shortstop Ripken and third baseman Boggs would go on to form the starting left side of the American League All-Star infield for 11 consecutive seasons. Ripken would also join Boggs as a member of the 3,000th hit club. But while he shares these feats with Boggs, there is one that is Ripken's alone, and it's known simply as the streak. On September 6, 1995, the Ironman played his 2,000th, 131st consecutive game, surpassing the unbreakable record of the Iron Horse. Lou Gehrig ended his streak 56 years prior. This trophy, which belonged to Gehrig and was later donated to the Baseball Hall of Fame by widow Eleanor, commemorates the record, a record that ended only because the beloved Yankees' first baseman was suffering the ravages of a disease that would eventually take his life, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, today most often known as Lou Gehrig's disease. On Independence Day, 1939, Lou Gehrig delivered one of the most famous speeches in American culture. For the past two weeks, you've been reading about a bad break. Today, 
I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Two years later, he would perish from the disease, but the legacy of his enduring strength continues to live on through the generations. Lou Gehrig once held another record, most hits as a member of the New York Yankees. And who was the player that topped that mark? Derek Jeter. Now that's how you pass the torch. If you want to learn more about the people, places, and artifacts in this episode, go to BaseballHall.org, where you can plan your visit to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York, and discover your own connections to the game. Thanks for watching. For more incredible stories, check out our after show, Hall of Fame Connections Extra Innings. And don't forget to subscribe. Blagada!